record on this computer. All right, today we'll learn our sicha about the giving of the Torah. The giving of the Torah, this is from the Chuti Sichas Aleph, from the Rebbe. <clears throat> we had the, mo the most uh, uh, interesting, shocking, game-changing event that ever occurred in the history of the whole world, by far, nothing com except for the created, created, creation of the world itself was the Torah. And in a way, the Torah is even more important. More important than the creation of the world because it says that's the reason why God created the world. God created the world in order that all of mankind should observe the rules of the world, which the rules of the world are the Torah. And for the non-Jews, it's seven Noahide commandments, which are in, in the Torah. <clears throat> and we see that it didn't exactly up to now has not come out that way. The, the Mashiach will make it that all the whole entire world will drop all of their false ideas and worldviews and perceptions and religions and this, <clears throat> and they'll connect only to the Creator through His Torah. <clears throat> and that's the goal. That's what Mashiach is supposed to do. He'll be a great leader, and just like Moshe, Moses took the Jews out of. Egypt, as Mashiach, will take all of mankind out of their <clears throat> wrong, <clears throat> let's say, axioms of life, you know, what, what life is all about. And Mashiach will show everybody how important the world is, and how important the Torah is, and how important every human being is. So let's see. This is a sikha, <clears throat> speech of the Lubavitcher Rebbe who most people that I consider to be the Mashiach, with no doubt, Mashiach. <clears throat> the Mashiach, by the way, according to a lot of opinions, the Mashiach can definitely come from the dead. And a lot of opinions, the Mashiach, he won't, he'll just appear to be dead. He won't actually be dead. By Matan Torah, by Matan Torah, it says, Daber Elohim is called Daber Elo. Remember, this is what we learned. This is the introduction statement right before the Ten Commandments. It says, God spoke all of these words, lay more to say. There are some of the commentaries that ask, what does it mean to say? Everywhere, where it says, where it says that God spoke to Moshe, lay more to say, meant it means, as men zol dem iber zogen, that Moshe, Moses should give this over to Yidin, to the Jews. Which they did not hear at the time of the commandment. Ah, oh, but by Matan Torah, but by giving of the Torah, this does not apply. Why not? The Baal does. All the Jews were at Mount Sinai. All the Jews heard God speak. There was no one to say it over to. They all heard it especially the first two commandments. They were supposed to have heard all ten commandments, the Jews. But they didn't want to. So the, the, but nevertheless, when, in the beginning, when God said all of these words, everything that I'm going to say, lay more, <clears throat> to say. God spoke all of these words to Moshe, to say. To say to who? Everyone heard. When all is, uh, all, in Gehert, every, all the Jews heard. So what does it mean, lay more? You can't say, maybe it means, say to the good, all the Jews were there, and what about the future generations? Because by Matan Torah, by Matan Torah, Zayin and Dach, given Oich the Neshamos from Shpeta de It says by Mount Sinai, <clears throat> that all of the souls were there also. It was like the raising of the dead. All of the souls were there. They all heard the giving of the Torah. All the future generations also. And for them, the message. If so, who, what does it mean that God spoke all of these words, the Ten Commandments, to say? To say to who? All of the Jews heard it. All the Jews that there were there, and all the Jews that ever will be in the world, they all heard it. <coughs> including all the converts, including all the Medrich or Mege, the Mezricha Magid, 
the Magid of Mezrich. It's called Reb Dov Bear of Mezrich. He was the pupil and the successor of the Baal Shem Tov. And he said, the Magic of Reb Meid, Nishmaso Eden, he said, as their Indian from Matan Torah, the whole thing of Matan Torah is, Mam Sheikh Zain, the Asera de Boros, and Torah in the Asera Mamoros, Shabem Nibra Olam. It says, Vayadaber, what's the first sentence right before the giving of the Torah? Vayadaber, <clears throat> Vayadaber Elohim, that God said, call it the Vorim Elo, all these things, lay more to say. But Yadaber, this refers to the Asara Divorot. The Ten Commandments are called the Asara Divorot. And Lemor are the Asara Mamarot. God created the world with ten utterances. Let there be light, let there be a firmament, let there be grass, let be this. The Ten Commandments are supposed to be in. You're supposed to draw down the Ten Commandments into the Ten Utterances that God created the world with. V'yaz is bevus, like is known, the Pirush, or if in Pasuk HaSara, HaSara HaKav B'Shekel HaKodesh. It says when the, in the inauguration of the tabernacle in the desert, so it says all of the, the tribes all together, the heads of the tribes, they brought all together, they brought ten each, they brought this, these spoons of what is it? Of gold. And it said that the, each one was 10 units. So it says, Asara, Asara, Kafa, Chekel, Kodesh. Okay, everything that's in the Torah, there are, there are different levels of understanding everything simultaneously. Bear, the, 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 in a big way, it's four. There's what's called Pshat, Remesh, Drush, and Sod. So every sentence has its simple meaning. But every sentence also has a homiletic meaning and a and a, a midrashic meaning and a and a, a secret meaning of the, the the mysteries. So when it says asara asara zakav kodesh, it means that they brought each one brought a golden spoon that was that weighed ten units. But you can also say asara ten ten was the spoons in the shekel kodesh. Each one had. 10, 10, why 10, 10? That the 10 utterances that God created the world with should be permeated with the 10 commandments. As the Asara Mamoros, that the 10 utterances, Zain Shokol, should be, they are, how do you say, corresponding to and <clears throat> exactly uh, created in a way that they can be permeated by the 10 commandments of God. I mean, just think about it. The, the world was created with words, and God gave the Torah with words. The whole Torah is words. <clears throat> but the words of the Torah are not like the words of, words of the creation. The creation are it's called God's external speech. And the Ten Commandments, that comes from God's internal speech, God's inner will. When therefore, so therefore, state it says, lay more to say, Mamshech, you have to draw down the Ten Commandments into the Ten Utterances. In other words, the whole entire world and every detail in the world should be permeated by the Torah. After all, God created the world and He created the world from the Torah. So what does this mean? Simply, simply what it means is, is that when you look at the world, you should know that it's God's world and that the world is not a jungle. The world has a plan. And that the plan is that man should use his free will. Man is the only creation that has free will. Man should use his free will in order to do, say, think, want, feel what God wants. They're Indian from the M in Avoda. What does it mean? What are we supposed to do? They're, just like I just said, as their aura Torah, that the light of the Torah, the Ten Commandments, Darf Lichten should illuminate Oich also in the Indian from Volt, also in the world, the Ten <coughs> Utterances that the world was created. Nitvi Devadi was not like the people which say that the Torah <coughs> is 
a besondere Sache, that the Torah is a thing unto itself, and the Welt is a besondere Sache, and the world is a thing to itself. The Torah is a religion book. Religion has its place in the world, but the world is the main thing. The religion has a place in it. Instead, look at it the other way around, <clears throat> that the Torah is the main thing, and the world has a place in the Torah. Don't think that the world and the Torah are two different things. It's not so. <clears throat> Zion Dick in the Saviva from Torah, when a person is in a place where there is Torah, Vet Er Zion, a Torah Yid, you might think that when you're in an area where there's Torah, right? Who did the Rebbe write these Sikhs to? Uh, um, uh, ostensibly, he wrote it to the religious people, to the Chabad people, right? <clears throat> right? That we should teach the world the lessons that are here. But the lesson is a very deep one. Don't think that when you're in a place where there's Torah, that then you act, you act according to the Torah. When you come into the world, then you have to be like what the world is like. That's how the, what's called the Haskalah movement started off. The, right, there were people that said you have to be a Jew in your house and a man outside. Yehudi b'beitecha, v'adam b'tzeitecha. Whenever you go outside, you have to be like everybody else. When you're alone in your house and nobody sees you, or when you're in the synagogue and only Jews see you, right? then you act like a Jew. Of course, eventually what happens is that the outside is much bigger than the inside. The outside world is much more <clears throat> formidable and also more promising and immediate than Judaism is. So when it comes out when a person's outside, maybe he doesn't eat kosher. And when he comes inside, the kosher food had an effect on his body, he brings it into his house. Right? The things that he saw, the things that he did. So eventually his house also becomes a little, right? Instead of putting the mezuzah on the outside of the door, you put it on the inside of the door, but maybe you don't put it on at all. <clears throat> and the tefillin gets smaller and smaller, and the keeper, of course, you take it off. We forget to put it on when you're in the house. And little by little, you start to realize that the world is the main thing. Of course, your children. <clears throat> they're less devoted to the whole idea than you are, right? The children are more realistic than you are. They see that the world, and so that's how the whole, says the Rebbe, that's the wrong attitude. The fact of the matter is that the same God that's creating the world is the same God that's giving the Torah, and the Torah is, is the inner will of God. That's the reason why he's creating the world. Lloyd <clears throat> Dem, according to this, Stel from Welt, according, a person might think that according to the world, is from Welt und the Führungen from Welt and the conduct, the way the world conducts itself, nor as Fadrzich, that, that a person, when he's in, the, in, in a, a religious place, so he acts religious, when he's by the people, so he, in, in the world, so he acts like the people. Uh, <clears throat> but really, what is really required as Allah Zayn and Inyanin, that everything that a person does, Oich the Inyanin from Welt, even the thing of the world, Zal and Zion should be loyta on Agasim Torah, according to the Torah. Men read it, read it, nit vegan devorim masurim. We're not talking about forbidden things. Das is da hapashi pesach. We were talking, the Rebbe, like it says, is writing this to religious people. It's not talking about this a foolish idea that I just said, right? That a true, genuine religious person, when he's in a house, he eats kosher. When he goes outside, he eats whatever he wants to. We're not talking about that. We're talking as does was men tor nit tor men nit dach nit. What are, what is forbidden? Sir, for sure is forbidden. Right? A person will remember a religious person when he goes onto the street. So it says, "Would you like a lobster?" It says, "No, I don't want to." There's a lot of people that are vegans and that they're they're um, they're uh, blah, 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 the vegetarians. They don't. It's all person will think you're not doing anything religious. It's just you know. But men made as a filu the devarim of mutarim, even the things that are permissible, darv nitzayin kana nachas olam. You should not treat them in the way that the world treats them. Balabatasha nachas, nor da nachas from Torah. The world, the attitude is the world must be used according to the way the Creator wants, and not the way that I want. Not to do what makes me feel good. Necessarily, the main decider is not me. It's Hashem. Das is oyech v'shteit hayes ali dimasi lechem yom on balayla b'amor alai kol a yom ayelokecha. That's what King David said in Psalms. 
when King David said, <clears throat> I cried day and night. My tears were like my bread day and night. When people said in the whole entire day, where is your God? Simple meaning is, is that King David was really, I'm listen, King David lived in Israel, right? All the people over there were, Jew, were Jewish. They were all Jewish. They were all religious. Everyone was religious. No such thing as a non-religious Jew. The idea of a non-religious Jew, right? It only started 300, it, briefly there was in the time of the Greeks. That's the whole holiday of Hanukkah. But a non-religious Jew, did, Jew didn't believe in God even back then, even in the time of Hanukkah. There was no such thing. Every Jew, so here's King David. King David was before the first temple was built. And everybody was religious, and they all had Torah of Mrs. But they all did the Torah. But everybody also did what they wanted to. Whenever there was a little chance to sort of uh, do what you want, you know, bend the Torah a little bit, everybody did. But King David did not. And so he said, and everyone was saying, okay, King David, you know, you're suffering all the time. We're having a good time. You know, where's your God? Here's your God you're talking about. You're, you're the chosen one of God, and you're the king. You're the, king David, it says in the Rambam, says King David was the first Messiah. He was the Mashiach HaRishon. King David was the first Messiah. And all he had was troubles in his whole life. So says, everyone was saying to me all day, I was crying and weeping, but everybody was saying to me all day long, people were saying, where is your God? Simple meaning. But there's a deeper meaning to that. says, how you see, why? Was I crying day and night? There is a zoy feel far bitter. He's very bitter. Biz as the demos far far biting lechem till his tears took the place of bread. The tirin b'shtayin anstat bright. The tears were in the place of bread. Why was David called crying? I just finished explaining why because everybody was laughing. He says there's a different meaning. Via says bavus like it's known. And then when a person is bitter, as it does away with hunger, person doesn't want to have, doesn't want to eat, doesn't want to have anything to do with the world. Person is depressed. On fum vel, but the from world is the far bitter kite, and the world comes. Oh no! And from what? From what comes the fact that David is bitter? Why? Why? So one reason is because everybody was laughing at him, scoffing. Where's your God? There's another explanation. Zog der Weiter, it says, the Amor Alai men kainet as men mont milamaila call a yom because God is demanding from me all the time the guns of tug, ayelokecha. Because all day you're supposed to be asking yourself, where is God? Are you really acting in the way that you should be if you knew that God really cared and God was watching you and God was depending on you, <clears throat> God trusts you to do what's right. <clears throat> but a person wants to be sort of free on himself. He says, when you take a stock of yourself, then you'll start to cry. Boy, 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 God is creating the whole world. And he has so much faith in me. And look what I'm doing all day long. In other words, listen, when I'm in my house, I act like I should. When I'm in synagogue, I act like I should. But when you're in the street, Elokecha mein kochecha v'chayoscha. What it means, your God, also means your power, your life. The force that's keeping you alive, that's also called Elohim. Dain koach, that's what Elokecha, your power. And where is Elokecha? Who is supposed to be the power of your life? What is supposed to enliven you and activate you? Havaya Elokecha. God, Yud Kei the one who gave the Torah. Hashem is lamailam yazman, above time, <clears throat> above <clears throat> the whole world. And there was there's certain things, what do you say? They say the joke. In America, they say, honesty is the best policy, sometimes. Honesty is the best policy, sometimes. What does it mean? So, it, it, it's a joke. The, it's supposed to be honesty is the best policy. Being honest is always the best thing to do, to be honest. But you can add on, it, honesty is always the best policy. Not always, right? Sometimes... That's not right. That's not right. But on the other hand, there's all the pressures of the world, pressures, and it's so difficult to always say the truth. And so this, so you give in a little. The person gives in. It says that rivers and people become crooked. Rivers, you know, rivers usually go, don't go straight. The rivers and people become crooked by following the path of least resistance. As soon as there's a rock, the river goes around it. Same thing with the person. 
As soon as there's a little bit of difficulty, so the person lies a little bit, he cheats a little bit. He's a... <clears throat> it says the Rebbe, if you're looking and you realize that Hashem is caring, he's giving you your life. As if so, it does, is that God, the one who gave the Torah, he's your life. He's your power, your life. Is not mirror even more. Anochi Hashem alokecha. What is your power in your life? It should be anochi, the essence of God. This means anochi misha anochi. The law is wrong is that it's not hinted at at any letter or any even the little point on the top of a letter. The essence of God is with you. He cares about you. He cares about me. He cares about each and every one of us, and not only in a general way, but what we do. What we say, what we think, does mean men by him. This is what a person, this is month, this is what a person is supposed to think the whole day. Where is your God? For a hergish, the feeling from Anuchia Shema Lukacha, this feeling that God gave a Mount Sinai, that I, my essence, that's above all being, is your power in your life. That's what's enlivening you and creating you. Who was there by dear the God said, Talk, where is this feeling by you the whole day? Thus was there heard on the melokecha beshait and davening that which a person feels God when he's praying or when he's learning the Torah or he's in learning in a class or in the time when he's in a forbringen or something. This is very nice, but it's not sufficient. Nit does is the kavana. This is not the intention of why God made the world. Does hot man kekent oisferin oich mit malachim. This God could have accomplished with angels. Oh, mit neshamas or the souls before they were put into body. But why did the God make the God had to make the world and put people in it with souls? Why, if God wanted to just he should, he should be praised all the time, thinking all the time, but. <laughs> so don't make any difficulties in the world or just suffice with angels. The kavana from Eurydice and Hashem, the reason that the soul came into the body is in order to refine the body and the soul, the natural soul. Because the soul itself, the, the godly soul, doesn't have to have any fixing up this, the soul before it comes into the body. It's okay. God put the soul into the body in order to fix up the body, the world. By in month, man, that's why God gave the Torah, so we know how to do this. As a gans and tug the whole entire day, Shasa Esther, time when a person eats, when a time when a person drinks, when a time when a person <clears throat> does business. And Bashas Air read it mentioned when he talks with his friends or other people. Zol Zain, it should be by in Elokecha. His power, his life, a Zoivir line, hot in Farstanen on their heart, Bishaz Davin. Your life should be the same way as it was when you were praying and when you were thinking about God. That should be the whole entire day. That's the power that was given from the Torah. <clears throat> That's what it means, lay more, Vayadaber, that the ten utterances, the ten utter, Vayadaber means the ten commandments should be in the lay more in the ten utterances that God created the world and creates the world with. So again, the Ten Commandments are that Esar Divorot, Vayadaber. That's the Ten Utterances of the Ten Commandments. That's the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> and Lamor are the Ten Words that God, Ten Sentences that God spoke when He created the world. By a world, Vayadaber Elokim, Vayomer Elokim, Yeor, Yeor, Lamor. Those are the Ten. Vayadaber Elokim, Lamor. Those are the Ten Utterances that God spoke to create the world. They should be permeated with the via daber, the ten commandments that God gave when he gave the Torah. And why is that so? Because the whole world is created by God and the instruction book for every instant of the creator of the creation is the ten commandments. <clears throat> and therefore everything should be permeated and all depends on us to do it. That's the power that was given from the Torah. There are certain people which say that Hasidut, these ideas of Hasidut, it talks a lot about God. This is what's called uh, mystical Judaism. 
Darf menim nit learn learn. Therefore, you shouldn't learn these secret ideas. <clears throat> the answer, the answer to this is like this: B'shas Matan Torah. When God gave the Torah, <clears throat> men get given Torah, Torah Kula. The whole entire Torah was given. Sign nigla un nister from the Torah. The secrets of the Torah and also the revealed part of the Torah was given when God gave the Torah. Adarab, exactly the opposite, even more. <clears throat> Not only the revealed part of the Torah and also the secrets, but exactly the opposite. First of all, was given <clears throat> the secrets of the Torah. God revealed himself. Nigla from Torah is given Don Benista, the revealed part of the Torah, that then, that was the part that was concealed. What was revealed at Mount Sinai? At Mount Sinai was revealed God. Vias Bivus, like it says, as in the Erst, the Aser's divorce, and the Ten Commandments are 620 letters. What's the 620 letters that hints at the 620, 620 letters? Corresponding to 620 commandments. There's 300, there is 613 commandments from the Torah, and there's seven commandments of the rabbis. <clears throat> seven commandments of the rabbis. For instance, you're supposed to say blessings, you're supposed to make a eruv. Commandments of the rabbis. Zain and Dag, the Allah, mitzvahs, Gaven, Basura, Divoro. So if so, all of the commandments the revealed Torah that we do, they were hidden in, a, in, in just a hint in the letters of the Ten Commandments. They're Kagan, but on the other hand, what was revealed? What was revealed is God. The Kagan, Nistar from the Torah, the secrets, what the secret of the Torah now is, Gaven was, Nigla was revealed. Barum, Allah Yidin, Habendah, Besas, Maise, it says that beside the fact that God revealed himself, but also the Jews saw all of the upper worlds, the whole Maisa Merkava, all of the spiritual worlds were all revealed. V.S. is Angadate in the Pasuk, Alfei Shinan, Sinai Bakodesh. King David had in one of the Psalms, he said that at Mount Sinai appeared all of the angels there. Shinan, Aretha Shur, Nesher, Aryeh, on their noon is Pene Adam. <clears throat> it says this is hinted at the four faces which are on the chariot of God. This is the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, the face of a lion, and the face of man. They were all revealed at Mount Sinai. So at Mount Sinai, the main thing was the secrets, was the godliness. And the commandments, they were hidden. If so, that's what the Hasidut now talks about. <clears throat> Hasidut is now explaining what was the main thing revealed in Mount Sinai, namely the godliness. That's the purpose of Hasidim. <clears throat> Therefore, the whole point of learning the ideas of Hasidut is just to get the main emphasis of what the Torah is, namely the godliness. And that's why it's important to learn Hasidut. <clears throat> Those people that are opposed to learning Hasidut, generally speaking, they have two claims. Number one, if it was so important to learn these ideas of Hasidut, to learn about the whole order of how God created the world and what the souls do and what happens <clears throat> when you do a commandment and when you learn Torah, <clears throat> where exactly evil comes from, what the, what's the whole purpose of it in the world and what, what's a positive commandment, a negative commandment, what it means to do tshuva and how everybody has to always come how to love God, how to have different levels of love of God, how to appreciate God, how to have awe of God, what is there to have awe about? All these ideas are explained in the Hasidut. Also, a lot of ideas of Kabbalah are explained in a, in a, a useful day-to-day -day manner. There's two reasons, though, that people, there, there's a tremendous opposition <clears throat> to learning the ideas of Hasidut. Now, maybe less, but there's opposition. One is, if it's so important to learn Hasidut, then why didn't it exist before? Why wasn't it there? All of a sudden, the Hasidu just came in the last 200 years, something, 200, 300 years, not more. Why wasn't it here? The Torah has been around for 3,300 years. Why wasn't the, this idea of learning Hasidut, why wasn't it here before? 
<clears throat> so we see it's not so necessary. Jews could get along with it for 3,000 years, you know. Number two reason is, is that when you learn Hasidut, you start to realize that the world is not <clears throat> the last word. The world does not control us. It tries to show that the whole world is negated to God. The world has no real existence to itself. As being That's not nice. You're de-emphasizing reality. There's two reasons not to learn Hasidut. Number one, Jews got along without Hasidut very well for 3,000 years. We don't need it. Number two, Hasidut de-emphasizes the physical world. Right? You have to be a human being, live in the world. What's the answer? The answer is, <coughs> it says in what's called the eight chapters of the Rambam. The eight chapters, it's an introduction that he has to Perki Avot. <coughs> the Zoe Vias is Faran. There are diseases in the body, so also there are diseases of the soul. From this, it's understood that from many things, a person can be sick in his body. You can learn <clears throat> from... You can learn and apply this also to diseases of the soul. In algamin in general, a disease usually means that something is missing. Or maybe a, a other S is a kalia, maybe something doesn't work, some part of your body doesn't work. Or something in the, in the body is, uh, is lacking. This is dumb, but there is a certain disease which is very common nowadays. And the Rebbe, this was given what, in 1953 or so. Nevertheless, a very common, it's still a very common disease. <clears throat> was this felt garnish, which nothing is missing in the body. In the body, Adarabha, is this gore tsuga given. There is something additional to the body. It is in plug, vemen ort, as as is done, not a, uh, a stick of flesh. What? Who cares if there's a, an extra, you know, an, an extra growth in the body? As fell dark garnet, nothing is lacking from the body. Something is just given additional. And that's like, nevertheless, we see that this is a terrible disease. <clears> oh, <throat> it's it's so bad, such a disease <clears throat> that <clears throat> even worse. It's even worse than if there's something is missing in the body until it's such a terrible disease that people don't even want to call it by the name. They call it, some people, they say the big C, right? The C. Don't want to say the name of the disease. Of course, the Rebbe is speaking about cancer. This additional, what happens? Part of the body starts to grow <clears throat> uncontrollably. This additional part of the body, this. <clears throat> this uh, the, uh, disrupts the place where it's found and it can also, God forbid, bring to worse. So is also spiritually. There's also a spiritual disease in the world that is now. <clears throat> Namely what? That <clears throat> I think I did. Uh, just like this, I'm sorry. Just like the disease is different from all the other diseases, similar also the, the, the healing from all these other diseases, healing from it is different from the healing of all. All of the disease is what do we do? We add something onto the person, something's missing. We give them more vitamins, we give them this. And this disease is that we have to remove that extra part. During them, by means of this, the person can be healthy, really truly healthy. The, the healing from that disease, this disease, had men ois ge funen in Gansen metaphor doris, poor doris tarik. The healing from this disease, which is radiation, is found generations before. 
Right? I remember that people didn't used to die from this disease, from, from cancer. There wasn't a, people died from, from, uh, from uh, tuberculosis. A lot of people died from, from um, <clears throat> what's it called? Not rheumatism, pneumonia. Pneumonia was very common. My, my two grandfathers passed away from pneumonia. They were smokers also, but they passed away from pneumonia. But that was a very common disease. But this disease was very, fairly, fairly recent. You know, the 40s, the 50s, people started having this and dying from this. So as the word, but the heal that, the, that was found, the healing was found like 100 years before this. On the vegan pratiums, bosozoits, who nuts in the refua, had man oiskafun and norsh better. How to use radiation in order to combat this disease this was discovered later, but the, 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 the radiation, the fact that there could be such a thing as radiation, it could be used, this was found before there was, what is it, Madame Curie, wasn't it? I, not this is a big history buff. So therefore it's understandable that this is exactly what we're talking about over here. The Healing. Why we need <coughs> Hasidut is exactly this. The disease of our generation is egotism. Rafua, let's see. And the healing for it is going to be Hasidut. Rafua is an Indian from Far Breitrin und Farstarken de Metzias Aguf. The idea of healing is supposed to be to strengthen a person and <coughs> And not to that that the and not to prevent something. Number two, Vibaltas Doros. Yes, because of the, the generations, we had not used this Vil Er Zich Nit. I'm sorry, this one again. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Okay. Therefore, it's, it's for, it would be foolish if a person would say, I don't want to use radiation treatment. Why? Because uh, healing is supposed to be something where you strengthen the body, not that you take something away from the body. And number two, for generations and generations, nobody used radiation for anything. If so, why should you have to all of a sudden use radiation now? And if so, this person, yeah. <clears throat> if so, this is a foolish, two foolish ideas. In other words, that because there's now a new disease, in other words, this idea of super egotism. Like I said <clears throat> before, in Judaism, there, there was no such thing as people denying God in Judaism. It just didn't exist. People always deny, they, they always believed in God and they always believed in the Torah. But they said, listen, maybe the Torah is, it's not so important. Maybe my, my, my desires are more. All of a sudden it came <clears throat> 300 years ago, whatever it is, Mendelssohn and these other people saying, listen, the Torah is not so important. Maybe God doesn't exist. Maybe it's just a nice idea. <clears throat> and then suddenly there came a whole new generation of Jews that they just said, the only thing that exists is me. This is like this disease that we're talking about, that all of a sudden there's a, a person's self became too big. It became too dominant. One part of the creation all of a sudden became like a, a, a cancerous growth, namely a person's own egotism. <clears throat> if, let's say, this person, God forbid, a person really does have this disease, and he says, I'm not going to use radiation treatment. Why? Because, <clears throat> number one, healing is, is, I know what healing is. You add something. You strengthen the body. You can't get... That I'm not going to use this thing. This takes away part of the body, radiation. Number two, hundreds of generations, man has been alive for so long and nobody used this type of treatment. Why should we use it now? Of course, the person that said that you'd say is a fool. <clears throat> because it's true, you have to strengthen the rest of the body, but not this additional sick part 
this sick part is not really an additional thing to the body. It's really extra. It doesn't have to, it shouldn't really be there. But this disease was is such a way that, it, let, let me just, one second, let me just finish saying it here. There we go. <clears throat> not only that in the past there wasn't such a disease like this like it exists now so everything that there is physically has its source in the spiritual everything that was the both the disease and the healing that's in our generations now what's called in the heels of the mashiach it says we're coming to the darkest of darkest times now we the way to put to darken the end of this darkness is, <clears throat> and the darkness now is what's called egotism, selfishness, um, the, 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 the crassness. <clears throat> in physical, there can be, and as it comes down to be that the person is, the, the person himself, his whole personality becomes like a big growth that's really extra. Well, God preceded this terrible thing with Hasidut. Hasidut came, that the whole idea is to feel the greatness of the creator, and that is supposed to, like we said in the first one we learned, the Torah is supposed to enter into our daily lives and make the world less dominant and our egotism less <clears throat> uh, dominating over our lives so that we can function as a normal person, but we have to get rid of this extra thing. So now it's understood that in one way, this is not similar. Of course, this is not similar. Namely what that radiation treatment is a thing that's used only for sick people to take away the bad. But Hasidut is not. Hasidut has this ability, if taken seriously, yes, to get rid of the egotism and et cetera. It can, false egotism. But don't think it's only for sick people. It's not, because the difference is, is that radiation, after a person is healthy, it's not usable anymore. But Hasidut is not so. Hasidut, even after a Jew, is totally healthy. And even a non-Jew, totally healthy and feels really good and serving. Nevertheless, the more one learns, the more love and awe and fear and faith one has in the Creator. And the more love one has for the Torah and for his fellow man. Have a good day. Have a may God bless you all and um, good Shabbat with Mashiach now. See you, I hope, on Sunday at 8.15. Shabbat Shalom.